Hello everyone, Des Kelly again here from GMIT Letterfrack and welcome along to another of our DCG SOLIDWORKS tutorials. Uh, just before we begin, if you'd like more information on the degree programs we offer in furniture design, wood technology or teacher education, then please see our Facebook or Twitter pages. So this is the project we're going to work on in this tutorial. It's a simple enough project. It's a, a Halloween ghost, since it's that time of year again. It's a simple enough exercise, as I said, but it covers some nice uh, quirky features. For instance, we're, we're going to begin by using a spline to, to sketch out the base of the, the ghost. We're also going to need to create a number of reference planes. The main body itself will be uh, generated using a lofted boss base, and we will add the top using a dome feature. We'll also use the shell feature to hollow it out, and we'll also look at how you offset the floor, uh, in this case, to give this ghost the impression of flying. But that offsetting of the floor is also useful in other applications as well. Now, moving over to SOLIDWORKS, we'll begin by opening a sketch of a spline, and we'll start that on the top plane. I'll hit the space bar to look 90 degrees to it. And I'm not going to give measurements for this. I'd rather if everybody has a go at generating their own uh, different profile. But what I want to do is make this kind of almost like a puddle shape and try your best to center it around the origin. I'd really like if that origin as much as possible was somewhere in the center of that shape. So I'll spend a few minutes uh, drawing that. Make sure it's a closed loop. If you're not happy with any of these, like I'm not, you can simply drag the points and... Uh, adjust it as you see fit. So when you're happy with that profile, I'll just pull that one in a little. When you're happy with that profile, close the sketch. That's going to be the base of our ghost. We then need to draw a similar profile up uh, above this to uh, outline the, the top of the ghost. So to do that, we need a plane to, to draw that on. So go to Features, Reference Geometry, Plane, our reference in this case will be the plane we've just drawn on, which is the top plane. And again, use your own dimensions. I'm just going to put that, in my case, up uh, 100 mil, maybe 120. And press the green tick to approve it. I'll now start a sketch on this plane. Again, hit sketch, hit spline. I want to look at 90 degrees to it, so hit the space bar and hit normal too. This time, try again to center around the origin. Make this one a little smaller and try to roughly mimic the shape you've created already. But try not to have this one as, um, as pointy or uh, try to have it more smooth than the original one. It just makes the, the image look a little neater. But as long as it looks something like that, you can't go too far wrong. So again, just make sure it's a closed loop. When you're happy with it, close the sketch. I'm finished with plane one now, so I will right click it and hit the hide icon. And now we can apply the lofted boss base feature. So go to features, lofted boss base, and click the two profiles. Now, before I commit to that, what I want to do is make sure that as this newly created yellow material transitions from the base to the top, it arrives at the top normal to this top surface. So if I go over here and activate the start end constraints, I can see I have options for the start and the end. And depending on which order you pick these in, one, the first one, will be set as the start and the second will be set as the end. So let's change the start in my case and select normal to profile. And that's exactly what I want. I want this top piece to be normal to profile. Now, if you want, you can also change the end normal to profile and you'll get that effect. But I'm going to leave my end set to none. So press the green tick to approve that. And there we have the, the body. So to round over the top, we're going to take that surface and apply a dome feature to it. So let's go to Insert, Features, and Dome. Click the face. Sometimes you might get a preview like that, sometimes you may not. But usually in a case like this, you need to select, or rather deselect, Continuous Dome. 
You can then expand this up. In my case, I'm going to put it to about 30 is good for me. And press the green tick to approve it. So now we will hollow that out. So activate the shell feature. Let's set the wall thickness to one millimeter and click the base. Now you may get a notification at this point telling you that the radius will have to be changed, but usually it's not going to get in the way. Just accept it and move along. And that line there is just to show me that there, there is a, a seam there, but if I turn off the, um, the, the shaded edges, you should see it should be pretty seamless. So let's put some eyes and a mouth in our ghost and I'm going to start um, using the front plane as a, a plane on which to start my sketch. If that doesn't intersect the model, which I suppose mine doesn't, so let's, let's actually do it. Click reference geometry, plane, and just put a plane exactly where you want it. So in my case I want it the other side, so I will hit flip offset and instead of offsetting a 10, I'm going to offset mine 8. But you just move yours so that it's approximately in the center of the, the ghost. So start a sketch of a spline on that plane. Hit spacebar, normal to, and draw whatever profile you wish. So I'm just going to try and draw an eye like this using my spline tool. Again, make sure it closes and forms a fully enclosed loop. One over here as well. And then one for the mouth. So press the icon to close out of the sketch. Let's right click the plane and hide it. And simply do an extruded cut features. Extruded cut. Select that sketch. And drag it out so it cuts its way through the material. Now at this point what I want to do is apply some materials. So I will move over and hit the Appearances, Scenes and Decals tab. Press the little push pin so it stays put. And try to find the fabric. So expand Appearances, find Fabric and expand that. And I'm going to drag cloth, white cotton, and drag and drop that onto my model. And move across until I see body. Now if you wish you can get a grey or a dark cotton, drag and drop that into the inside of the part and move across and drag and drop it onto the, the shell, onto the feature. So the inside of that will turn black. Finally, for now, uh, minimize appearances and maximize scenes. Go along to studio scenes and just get something that has a reflective floor. I will pick reflective floor black and drag and drop that into the background. Usually you can't see the reflections unless you activate the Photo View 360, but if I were to render this, the ghost would be sitting on the floor. So if you want to offset the floor, the floor currently rests where that top plane is. But to offset the plane and make it appear as if this ghost is, is hovering, right click anywhere in the blank background Select Edit Scene, and over here, Floor Offset. So increase that to approximately 40 or 50 millimeters. Press the green tick, and you'll see the top plane is still there at the bottom of the ghost. But by changing that setting, you've told the PhotoView 360 and indeed SolidWorks not to align the floor with the top plane, but to align it 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever millimeters below the, the ghost. So here we are after we've used PhotoView 360 to generate a photorealistic uh, rendering of our ghost. Not only can you see that the material appearances come out uh, pretty good, but also that it appears to be hovering or floating above the floor due to the offset that we've applied. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed that or want to find out more, simply visit the remainder of our tutorials on our dedicated GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel. Looking forward to seeing you then.